five terminal commands that you absolutely need to know. Now, these are big ones. They are going to save you a ton of time. The very first one is by far the most important one. You're going to want to see this. And I'd be shocked. You got to let me know in the comments if you've actually seen this one. Because, oh man, when I discovered this, it was amazing. TLDR. TLDR. What does that do? Oh, this command's not found? Let's install TLDR. It's in every single repository that I've seen. It's been a while since I updated. I've been bad. Oh man, I got 500 packages. Ooh, slacker. That's what I am. All right. TLDR. Oh man, this is cool. TLDR. TLDR. What does that do? Oh, how about that? That looks so cool. It basically, instead of doing a help, which the help up here you can see, and you can make out kind of what to do. And then if you do man TLDR, these are man pages, which are if you need a massive explanation for every single option and what to do, man pages are actually pretty good. But TLDR is this perfect in-between help and manual pages. It basically just spits out a bunch of examples. You just say, okay, TLDR command. Oh, it says, hey, look, give me some TLDR rsync. Oh, okay. So it gives you basic examples of how to use it. Another one that many Linux noobs need to know is tar. You know, untarring files, unzipping files, basically. Using tar, not the most intuitive thing out of the gate if you've never done it before. But this really shows you how to use this. TLDR will save you so much time reading man pages and also saying, okay, I see the help file. How am I going to use these options? TLDR just says, hey, just do this. And it saves me a ton of time. Next up, this is going to be a short one. C matrix. Now you could just do basic C matrix like this, but this is not my favorite one. In the movie, it doesn't quite look like this. So to actually maximize your coolness in your terminal you need to do a c matrix dash a for asynchronous ah that does look a little better doesn't it i like the asynchronous just a bit better than the stock settings uh and if you want to know what uh, you can do with c matrix let's just do a tldr okay asynchronous scrolling oh you can display it in red you can do rainbow mode let's do it in red i don't think i've ever done c matrix red oh that's cool. So if what happens if we combined? Oh, asynchronous red. Oh my gosh. We are discovering stuff today. That's number two. Let's get to number three. With a bullet. Trash CLI. Trash CLI is absolutely amazing. Oh, we don't even have it in here. Let's install trash-CLI. What trash does is it puts stuff in the trash can. When you do an RM, dash rf and then you just delete a whole bunch of files from your home directory which i've done don't do that command i would just say there's no getting it back there is no trash can but we can fix that which the trash cli does let's do a listing and let's say we want to trash dot veil dot ini okay we we deleted that file and if we do a listing you'll see veil ini is not there but we can do a trash list and look at what's in our trash can. And you're like, okay, the most recent one down at the bottom was the veil INI. To recover veil.ini, you could do like a recover command from the command line. But a lot of times when I'm recovering deleted files, I actually like the GUI. So I usually just pull up my file explorer and pull up and go, oh, here's my veil and INI. Let's restore that. So restoring directly from the file explorer, this just puts it in your global trash, not just some regular trash. Uh, but if you did want to do that, let's, uh, I, I can't remember the recover command. Let's TLDR that. Trash dash CLI. Okay. Okay, let's uh, do trash dash restore and then choose with a number. Oh, uh, let's choose number 40. Let's do a listing. Veil.ini is back. Pretty awesome. So now the next step to this would probably be to alias RM, which would be pretty big. So now we're going to vim our bash RC. And we're going to look for the rm command. So if we actually look at rm equals, all right. So right now it's doing this IV setting, which is fine. But I think what we really want to do is we'll take out the I and we're going to actually do trash dash V. So now let's source bash RC or relaunch your prompt. 
whichever you're comfortable with. And now let's remove that dot veil dot ini. All right. It gave a verbose output. It says volume of file, Titus, trash directory, Titus, and it trashed it. So if we do a trash list, you'll see it there. And we can even see it over here. Boom. And again, we'll just restore that, except this time we're going to restore it here. And we'll do a listing. And sure enough, it's there. So working with trash in terminal, I think is really important. Making an alias for RM just in case you do something stupid, which... I do often, let's be frank. I make YouTube videos and people love seeing a disaster. So I'm always RMing <laughs> with no thought to what I'm deleting. That's why I keep good backups. But regardless, this does save me from time to time. And the other one I've actually already shown in this tutorial, that is auto jumping. And auto jump, just do a sudo apt install auto jump. Well, it's already installed, but once you CD into a directory, let's say GitHub, CD GitHub, this directory has all these files. So let's say we are in our root directory. Let's clear that out. Let's jump back to GitHub. Whoa, it fixed my caps. It said, here's the directories you've been in lately. The trick with auto jump, or let's say I want to go over to my website. I can just jump over to my website, or I want to jump to my .config. All right, I'm in my home.config. You can jump around your entire directory structure with auto jump. Every distribution has this package and it's easy to install and it's gonna save you a ton of time. The only catch with auto jump, I'm gonna warn you ahead of time, is that you have to already be in that directory or have gone to it or direct browse to it in the terminal. Once you've done that once, you're good for good. And then you can just go J space and the directory name and you just jump there. They do that because if they recurse the entire folder structure, you're gonna to jump to all kinds of weird directories or if there's obviously gonna be another dot config somewhere in the system, it would jump to that one instead of the one I always go to. That's why it builds this database as you go. But when do a TLDR auto jump, you'll see there's other stuff we can do with it. You can give it patterns. You could purge the existing database. So let's say you go to too many folders and all of a sudden you're like, okay, I need to just go to these five or six. I want to clear out my database. You just purge it. You have all this right here at your fingertips. Amazing, great for speed in terminal. And lastly, this is kind of an obscure one and that is pseudo progress. Uh, progress kind of tells you what's going on. Let's say you issue a DD command and you're like, how much longer is this DD command going to run for? And you just don't know. You can do a progress of that. So let's check out what progress does. So what you could do is, let's say for DD, let's install progress first. <laughs> uh, it would run into it and go, okay, uh, we need to do that. And if it was run, DD is going to be run as sudo. So we're going to run that as a super user. And then it would say, okay, here it is, or there's no DD command running. But this will really give a good progress of what's going on. So to show this off, I went ahead and plugged in an SD card, and I'm gonna do what's called a DD command. I'm gonna clone an ISO file over into that SD card. We could also do an image file. Let's say I've been putting this in a Raspberry Pi. I could also do that. But I'm gonna grab something of substance, maybe like a Windows ISO. This would be a good one. And we're gonna go disk destroyer or sudo DD. Input file is gonna be media images forward slash win 10. And then obviously the output file is gonna be the dev SDF. Usually you put a block size of about one meg. And usually you can put like status progress and sometimes it shows a little bit, but we're also going to do the progress in the top one right here, starting the copy. Now let's come up to our status and you'll see kind of what's going on. Time remaining, probably about 30 minutes. It says that seems a little off, but let's see is because it's reading the entire capacity of the drive and then writing it out. Pretty sure this is only about a five gig. ISO. So once it hits five gigs, it should be done. But this would give you kind of an estimation of how much time is remaining if it were going to write the entirety of this drive. So that's every terminal command. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. What ones do you always use that you don't really think a lot of people do? Because these commands make my life way easier. I love them. Uh, and, you know, they I think they can be improved. Like progress at the end there, 
I really think running a bash script with PV and, and figuring out something a little bit better for monitoring progress would be better, but at least it's something than just staring at a black screen going, well, I think that might take this long. <laughs> so with that, I'll see you in the next one.